He was known as Hitler's personal prisoner. He was a, a young barrister, German obviously, Jewish ancestry, who two years before Hitler had come to power had decided to put Hitler uh, on the stand and subject him to this incredibly searing cross-examination in a Berlin court. Two years after, that is when Hitler seized power in Berlin, Hans Litten was one of the first political targets to be taken that night. He was sent from one German concentration camp to another. Adolf Hitler had never forgotten that horrible experience in a German court. At the time, he probably didn't realise how brave he was. He was a very, very brilliant young advocate. He was only 32 and he, uh, he believed in what he was doing. It's very rarely that you get a script with um, a, as, as beautifully written as this for a start. And the story was completely unknown to me. I hadn't heard of um, Hans Litten. I'd never heard of Ermgard Litten. So it was a, an eye-opener. And um, plays like this remind one what a democracy is. And I think what Ermgard can't believe and outrages her is the fact that there is such a thing as democracy and law and order and uh, freedom of speech and all those things that we hold and take absolutely for granted here. Elmgard's particular situation is um, one that will touch a lot of women, I think, because it is a mother's view of things. They will do anything. It, it has affected people a great deal. And also fathers, funnily enough, there was a a man who came up to me who said uh, Fritz's last speech where he said I knew my son as a young boy but as he grew up I lost him I and he said I feel rather guilty I he felt the same he felt rather guilty about his not understanding this grown man and how the mother understood the child but respected the man he was growing into and that has been very prevalent. I'm very lucky to have met Mark and have this wonderful play to do. It's most brilliantly written and um, I, I can't believe my luck. You can't make people feel things they don't want to feel. An audience will have to come and see how they feel about it. Today I think it speaks about the enduring struggle, uh, which is a political struggle, and, and the enduring love that, 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 that mothers especially, and they just not say fathers as well, but it's the mothers who put up the front line, have further children who are disappeared by a regime. That to me, that's a very important story.